one of our subscribers needed some help by recreating the material in this image, so he sent me his reference and after one hour and a half of testing I solved his problem. I divide this in three steps so you can recreate this as well, but there is an even better surprise at the end of this video, so let's get started. Hey guys and welcome back. So as you can see we are in Substance Designer and in here we have the reference images that our subscriber sends us. We are going to be recreating the material that you can see in here, which is kind of a cloth. Now this material tends to be a little bit tricky because in Substance Designer they're looking one way but when we go to render they are going to look different. If you want to see the results go to the end of the video that I'm showcasing there as well. So we needed to make a pattern where a single shape had to go under another shape that goes into another direction. So first is we need to make th these small shapes that we see here in a way that they can go underneath the other shapes. So we need to do a single one and that's what we did at the first. We created a shape node with a parabolic pattern with a shape of the scale of 0.71 and a size of 0.33 on, on X. After that we used the gradient linear one with a rotation of zero with a multiply to generate the shape. We auto level this so we can bring some values up because we're going to be repeating the same process but with the inverted version of our gradient linear one. Now you can just <laughs> copy this one and change the rotation here but just to save some space as you can see we are just using a transformation 2d and rotating it there's nothing wrong about it and there's not going to be a problem now that we have this information and again we multiply to create another gradient we are generating a new levels where we move the whites to, towards the, the, the blacks these are the specific parameters that i use so you can pause the video and watch this and reiterate them as well so now this is where things get a little bit tricky we need to make kind of the details in this shape why because if we do it when we create the pattern it's just gonna look weird and we might cause a lot of distraction so it's better to do it in one single shape and then we are gonna add the variation later so first thing is that this kind of cloth has some directionality in it maybe because of the quality of this you can't see it but for the one i have on my hand you can really see that it has some kind of hair lines going in a specific direction that's why we use directional scratches i am using a scale of 2 and a rotation of 90 degrees yes and our pattern size is 0.5 by 20. now what i am doing here is i'm copy this pattern yes on top of my shape the amount of intensity i'm using on my copy is of 0.4 but the secret is at our mask and you can see it here because it's going to change drastically the result we're doing so our mask had to be composed that means that it's going to be a mixture between two things first our main shape because we don't want this noise to be everywhere as you have just seen we want it to be just in our shape and we're using a gaussian spots too multiplied by our main shape just to generate some points of interest where there's going to be more information and other points where there's going to be less information now moving forward we needed to add some fur to this because it wouldn't be kind of like clothed if we didn't have that so here is where i kind of make a mess so let me organize this a little better for you guys so you can understand it more yeah so I use different masks here, or exactly the same, better said, but let's see how. So I created a fur 2 with a scale of 2 and a weight rotation of 0 0.125. I transformed this to rotate it 90 degrees and I am using a max lighten, yes, with the same shape as an opacity mask to generate some kind of like fur in the edges. Yes, the reason I'm doing this in two different steps is because I want the different directions and you're gonna see it in the next one. For the next four, I'm using the four free, which is this, the, the one that follows. We are using a weight amount of two and a scale of one. There's nothing else we are going to add because we are gonna be using a max light and, and we are gonna add more hair to this. So you can see here how it goes from small hairs that go in one direction with other big hairs that goes that start to go inwards. Those hairs are just to simulate a little bit like those kind of threads that start to get off the pattern they start to break off with the use of it finally we are going to the last four which is the four one that is going to be our general four this four has a scale of two and nothing else we are just again max and we are adding four everywhere yeah so you can see the result of this 2d image by comparing before the four and after the four and this is going to be micro detail just micro noise because you're not going to be looking at these details from far away and we are going to be talking about that later so for our pattern i just created a tile sampler and i used our shapes rotated in two ways so the first part was going to be set your pattern to pattern input and tile it by 80 by 80 yeah 
and we are going to use a pattern input of two so we use two shapes the main shape is going to be the last one you had and the second shape is going to be one you have to rotate 90, 180 degrees with a transformation 2d now that you have that you are most probably going to have a result like the one i'm about to build So if this is our result, that's all right. We just need to change some parameters. So we're gonna start by the first thing first. We're gonna change from pattern input distribution random to pattern number. That way we're gonna be making sure that we have one row of each shape. And the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna offset this by one to generate exactly the same pattern. You can see you have one shape that is going upwards and the next shape it's going horizontal. So we have vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and it repeats in all directions. So now that we have that, we just need to increase the scale. Yes, until we get what we need. Yeah, pretty much. So you can make this bigger or smaller. It's just gonna really depend on you. The actual parameters I use are smaller. I use a 2.7. Now, something to have in consideration. I didn't touch anything else because if we do touch anything else, this is gonna break up. And why do we don't want this to break up? Because this is a industrial or man-made pattern. That means that it's perfect. And you can see it in the reference. In the reference, this is just perfect. We can't make on designer right now this part of the pattern where you see this kind of against the, the plastic of, of the object. Uh, because we don't have that in our material but you can clearly do this in substance painter if you're using that as your main texture in front props now that we have this we can actually change this in different ways you can use a safe transform if you want yeah and you can make it rotate in different directions just by changing this and you're gonna change as well the result of your pattern and everything should keep working as intended. Now we're gonna pull backwards and we're gonna follow up to the next steps. And the next steps is the actual fur that you don't see from these reference images, but it's actually there and usually are quite similar to the furs we just created here. Yes, that kind of fur or those kinds of strings that usually start to break up. So you start to see them everywhere. Those are the ones we're gonna be doing in the next two steps and we're gonna be dividing them in the smaller ones to the bigger ones. So the smaller ones is basically, we're gonna be using a fur too. But in this scale, we're gonna change the scale to five we're gonna set the wave scales to one and the wave rotation to one because we want this to be super random. We're gonna blur them by 0 0.05 and an app quality of one with an HQ blur. And we are multi going to multiply this by a mask that we're gonna be creating with our levels. Now I use these levels to have a little more shape on our mask, but you can clearly also use a threshold for this. And I think it should work the same. If I apply it here, maybe the results are a little bit sharper, but as you can see, this might be even better or easier to do an automatic than using the levels. As we change the style sampler, pattern and tiling, it's just gonna be adapting. So this is actually more procedural. Now, how do we combine this? We're gonna be combining this by using a high blend, yes, as you can see here. So the mask is actually working really good. So the high blend is basically to mix these two things and not make it look kind of suspicious. So we're gonna be using a height offset of 0.5 and a contrast of 0.9. This is just basically how it comes by default, so you shouldn't worry about it. You can change the contrast to one to add a little bit more fur, but it's not gonna be needed unless you really want to go really far on this. Now, for the second fur, we actually made something more personal. And this is gonna be the part where you start to make fur by yourself. So first you're gonna create a shape with a parabolic pattern and you're gonna scale down the X to 0 0.01. You're then going to add a gradient linear one and multiply it by your first result because we need this kind of hairs to feel like they are coming off from our pattern. We are then gonna warp this several times to get different shapes. And this is gonna really depend on what type of result you want cheap. Now remember that the warp node is actually quite strong. And when you do this, you're gonna get a result like this and it's gonna be really bad. So you need to load that down. Let's use a value of 0 0.12 in your intensity warp and for your paneling noise that is gonna be your gradient input, you're gonna use a scale of 18. Now we're gonna use this map in different nodes. We're gonna use then a directional warp with an intensity of 10 and we're not gonna change the warp angle unless you really want to. Finally, we are gonna warp this again by 0 0.18 
H7, but we are going to be using Gaussians 2. Gaussians 2 is another kind of map that you can have in Celestin Designer where you have these kind of spheres that are kind of blurred. Now that you have this, we are going to just create different variations of the same, same thing. How do we do that? We create another directional warp, yes, with another input map that is going to be the Gaussians 1, which is bigger than the Gaussians 2, and we are going to use an intensity of 15.53. Then we are going to generate an, the same exact directional warp, but you are going to change the warp angle. In this case I'm using 155.97 degrees. After that it would be great if you could auto level this just to get better shape. But we're missing one. From the first direction world get a swirl grayscale so we can have this kind of swirl uh, hairs and again use auto levels. For the swirl I'm using an amount of minus 0.95 and you can see it at my right. Now how do we tile this? We're gonna create a tile generator and set this to image input and give it three image input patterns. We're not gonna tile this by 100 by 100 because this should be really small for what we're doing. Finally, you, just, you can go just crazy as you want with these parameters, but in my case, I use 4.58 for my scale and 0.31 for my random scale. When it came to the random parameters, I used offset random at one and it did the same for position random in here in X and Y. I also added rotation random because at this point it was not gonna be easy. And this, believe it or not, is the base to many things you can do later, like for example, something we're gonna be working on later that are kind of roots for some of our materials here. But we're gonna be talking about that later. Finally, to end this material, you need to again hide blend and the parameters are just basic, just as they come, they don't need much work. These are kind of the four that you find on top of this kind of cloth. They are a little bit annoying, 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 but as the material is so small, they have to be there, but they don't have to be as exact as in your reference because at the moment it's not gonna be literally detail C because it's really, really small. Now that we have created a wear height and a normal map, let's see some other nodes and parts of our material that you haven't seen yet. Yeah. So in this case, first let's go to some notes that we have talked about before in other chapters. So first the height map is, sorry here it is, the height map is being blurred by 0.1. Yeah. My ambient occlusion is using world units with a quality of 16 samples and a high scale of 10 centimeters. Now my roughness is coming out of my base color but we're gonna get into that right now. After seeing that our normal map is actually having an intensity of 5 which is actually quite strong to my taste for the image I'm looking right now. I could actually lower it down to 2.5 but I'm not sure how it's gonna look at the end so for the moment to get the same results you're gonna see at the end just go with the same parameters and you can change them later. For our base color we are going to to do a basic training. So we are going to create from our normal map a curvature smooth and a curvature node. This is going to allow us to blend them together with an opacity of 0.26 and a blending mode of copy just to get the curvature smooth but with a little bit of sharpness result. Yeah. So we have more detail in our base color. Now the gradient map. The problem that we always have on how can I share this to you. So this is not something I can really give you a technical explanation of this but most of the time once you, once you have your grayscale mask you create your gradient map and you start to do some several intents on how you want this to look yeah so in my case what I did is I came here and I start with the dark area and then go into a more kind of light area as you can see and then increase this and kind of get and got there but as you can see this is not the same result and that's because I might have, might have uh, got another pixel where there was more light of the image so the result is gonna really change a lot if you want to have a really great result just test out do different gradient maps don't do just one just get here and get the same gradient map big gradient and just do it on another way and start test testing out see if just by doing this everywhere you get the same result or just because you did it you just started in one place and ended in another one you get another result you might understand how this works and you might even learn how to explore more in these matters and try to get a better result now in here i wanted to create some highlights on our material so what i did is i recreated a mask and mm, copied them so basically what i'm highlighting here are the hairs yes that are kind of like loose those hairs usually are kind of like reflective in our surface and i want them to be kind of visually far away so in order to do that what i did is i got my mask from my height mask here in my high blend i input it into my opacity of this blend now i grab my base 
base color and took it into an HSL and added a value of 0.57 into my lightness. And that's actually how the base color goes. This is a quite simple material, but yet complex to do because of just one thing, and it's the tiling. So as you can see right here, this material has a huge tiling, yeah? It has 80 by 80, but when you're gonna be using it in your prop, you're gonna be doing a way huge tiling in this. If you don't believe me, look right now at the render that is the result. This render has been tiled four times in order to look as you see right now. Of course, this is made in Marmoset Toolback 4 with ray tracing, which makes it look even better. But when you're working with clots, it's really important that you understand that the texture density of what you're going to be using is really important. Now we are back in Substance Designer and let's finish off with a really nice uh, roughness and an opacity mask. So for the roughness what I did is I got the end of my base color and input it into my grayscale conversion node. This allowed me to have basically the same values of my color but translated to my roughness. Now I'm using a histron range and I'm putting my range at 1. Yes, so I don't have anything else of information that I don't want to. And I move my position to 0 0.76 to have a less of a brighter result. After that, I subtracted the mask from the hairs. Yes, the mask that you have here from this side mask, the last high plant. I subtract it to my roughness just to make a highlight of these places. So if you may not see it right now on the 3D viewport, let me show you by just increasing the intensity and changing the displacement of this material just like this so you can see how this is actually working and you see that's the kind of effect I wanted. You see that when I move the light there's kind of like shiny everywhere. That's what I wanted to do. Now, why isn't this hole in the middle not shining? Because I have an output for that, that I created myself, and I will show you how to do it, that works for opacity. And it's the one that I have down here, yeah? So first, let's create the mask. What I, the only thing I had to do to create the mask, I just went to my last node and created a threshold. And I set it to greater with a value of 0 0.01. This is gonna be just automatic and you might need to change it depending on the tiling. I don't promise you it's not gonna break, but if you keep tiling this even smaller and smaller, it might break. Yes, because you can see that already this is actually quite small. So how do you create the output for your opacity? First, what you have to do is, or you can come here, click and drag and drop an output, or you can press tab and create output. Yeah, what you were flows is actually quite good. Next, in your output node, what you have to do is you have to change your components to RGBA and you change your usage to opacity. Once you have that, you are not going to, uh, going to be able to see that in your 3D viewer. And the reason for that is because it's not being used. And you have to tell your software to use it. How do we do that? We come to your node and you right click and you see view in 3D. Once you do this, you look for the opacity and you click on it. And now it's going to start to show it right there. So if you weren't seeing it, just do that and you're going to see that the opacity starts to work. Now, it might be a little bit confusing to, to know if it's working or not because there's kind of like gray background and you can't see the inside of this. But the limit's working and if not, go to your render software and try it out. You just need to export this. Now, remember the identifier is the name that we're going to use inside Substance Designer to call for this node, but the label is going to be the name that we give to our map. So here I should have written opacity. So now if I go here and export outputs, you're going to see that I have my output here. Now the name hasn't changed, which is actually quite weird because I didn't change. In fact, it's not weird at all. This is because I haven't changed something from here that should be the identifier. Actually, let me see if it was the identifier. Maybe I was wrong about it. Yeah. It was this. So it looks like when you export your materials, these outputs names you see here are basically the identifiers and the labels are just the names that you're going to see on your notes here. Now that you have learned how I made this material, it is time that you test it out. That is why I am giving all the files of this tutorial for free. You can find it at our free Discord community where professionals of the gamer industry help students learn the path of the material artist by providing feedback, free classes and events like the challenges with prices that we have been doing in the last month. To claim this gift, click on the link I have left in the description of this video. Once you are in, go to the resources chat and download the files. Now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.